two hematologists that looked at things from two different views. We've had an endocrinologist, uh, a psychotherapist, and a pulmonologist. This evening will be our sixth show talking about the virus alone. Tonight we'll be discussing the psychological aspects of this pandemic. Again, it's a very big topic, so we wanted to make sure we covered it. Um, we have with us a very special guest, a beloved part of our SDS community, Ms. Nancy Sincata, the psychosocial so director of Camp Sunshine. I have to share a very sweet story from today. Um, my Roman was laying in my lap while I was working on the show. He asked me, what are you doing, Mama? And I said, I'm working on this show that's on the internet. And he said, why? And I said, because it helps people, baby. And he said, why? And I said, because when you help other people, people feel less alone. And he said, that's nice, Mama. So there you go. My five-year-old Roman approves of SCSF Live. As you guys are logging on, please let us know where you're logging on from. Michelle, where's your mask? Do we need masks? I don't know if you can hear us, Orva. Can you hear me? I can't hear you. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Oh, there I am. There I am. I had my volume off. It was me. <laughs> Okay. Okay. Sorry. I don't think we need our masks, Michelle, because we're no. in two different houses. We're staying home and isolated. Oh, okay, we're safe. We're safe. I do have a blanket, though, because I've had a long day. on today because we love Nancy and we just wanted to be comfy today, but I'm kind of sweating under this light, so I may have to <laughs> blanket it off. Oh, look at everybody here. When you log in, let us know where you're watching from. I don't know if Nicole said that already because I couldn't hear anyone because I muted all of you. <laughs> How is everyone doing? This is our mental health check-in. Hi, Dawn, again. I'm so glad Dawn's joining us again today. And there's Kristen, and Jenny's here, and Joan is here. And Jackie. Look at everyone coming in. I love it. Welcome, welcome, welcome. We are excited to have another week with you guys. You're going to get sick of seeing us soon. Or maybe not. Who knows? <coughs> Good job coughing into your elbow. I know. I was like, I'm by myself. But. For those of you not familiar with Camp Sunshine, um, where Nancy, or we know Nancy from, it's a family retreat in Maine. It is for children with life-threatening illnesses. They invite the entire family, and it's a wonderful place. Um, yes, 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 community meets every other year. This July, we were supposed to meet, but it was canceled for us all to be safe. So I know a lot of us are disappointed and sad. Nancy has over 40 years experience with bone marrow failure families. She meets with multiple groups at camp, the teens, the moms, the dads, the parents together, everyone gets supported at camp. So hopefully seeing Nancy tonight will bring a smile. Yes, and then um, Jenny just said down here, I just realized that had an M next to it. Sorry, Nicole. It said, uh, Jenny said, I've been looking forward to watching. She loves the social interaction. So that's helpful. That's good. Yeah, I'm actually going to my blanket on because it's comfy. Um, yeah, it's, it's, thanks for sticking with us with this, guys. We love seeing you and, well, seeing you from more than seven feet apart for sure for some of us. Definitely. Um, yeah, and if you guys are here, um, if you just uh, go onto your post, wherever you're watching from, and click the little share button, and you can click share to um, post or whatnot. Um, you can start a watch and, party. And then it'll start a watch party. When I was at SDS Day in Boston, I saw in November, I saw Nancy in the hall. Um, 
And I got a little teary just seeing her, like out of the corner of my eye, waiting in the hall. And then um, when I got to say hi to her, she said, I got a little teary seeing y'all too. And it was, it was so sweet, so sweet. Um, as a reminder, this show is brought to you by the Schwachman Diamond Syndrome Foundation, providing support for patients and their families around the world. This show is public. Please do not post any private questions. These shows are uploaded to the SPSF website and YouTube. Subtitles are added and you can translate into your native language. And all yeah. our past shows are up there too. Definitely. All of our past shows are on YouTube and we're actually going to show you at the end of the show how you can find them all because we had a couple of people message us say, oh, I wish you do one about this. And we're like, where you been? We did. Let's just show you where it is. We're working hard over here. Exactly where to find them. So we wanted to have another giveaway this week that sparks a little bit of a giggle because Nicole and I don't usually get to have fun fun with our giveaways, but we know we're all a little crazy right now. So the world feels really heavy. So hopefully this will make you guys laugh. We found a tortilla blanket. Everyone needs a tortilla blanket. So I don't know whoever, who doesn't need a tortilla blanket. Whoever wins this, bonus points if you um, mail us back a picture. Uh, send us back a picture of yourself wrapped up in it. I would like it to almost become like a flat Stanley kind of thing. Like, where do you go with your tortilla blanket? <laughs> to win our giveaway, you need to interact with the show in some way. Comment, share, give us a thumbs up, or start a watch party. Yes, if you've won a previous giveaway and you have not received it yet, please let us know. We're working out sort of all the kinks of um, people receiving the notification that they have won. So we've got kind of a pile of stuff that we don't want to keep. We want to, yeah. to give it to you guys and, and the people who have it don't also want to keep it. So we want to get it to you guys. So we're going to start. There's I know there's a couple that are behind. Maybe I'll actually go through and make a post of everybody. There you go. Yeah, so we need Nancy. I need Nancy tonight. Yes. Uh, when I said we were doing Nancy, I'm like, I need a whole hour with Nancy Hello. by myself. And we're very glad she's here. <laughs> and I, I promise I'd share her with all of you. So, Hi, Nancy. Hello. Hello. Hi. Welcome. There's no place like Nancy's place. And right now we're all in Nancy's place, literally. Literally. <laughs> Because we can't go to her this summer, we wanted to bring her to you guys. Please welcome the one and only Nancy. Hello. Thank, thank you, Nancy, for joining us. For the international and newer families, can you share with us a little bit about your background? We, we give you a little bit of an intro, but. Sure. Um, it's fun to already see names of people that I've known for a very long time on the yeah. chat. And for people I haven't met yet, I'm Nancy Sincata, and I. Um, in this climate in particular, I feel the need to say I live in New York City, um, and in our state, we've had 288,000 people test positive for COVID, so we are um, very familiar with masks and hand washing and doing whatever we need to to stay safe during this time. I have been a social worker since 1979, and I was a life specialist before becoming a social worker. Um, I'm 110 and I look really good for my age. Um, but in general, I just want you to know that my entire career has been committed to helping families of kids with life-threatening illnesses. And I got involved with um, the bone marrow failure diseases because of a doctor named Jeff Lipton and Blanche Alter because they were both working at Mount Sinai where I worked for about 30 years and I still do some consulting and I'm happy to say that I've known Joan um, and Dawn who's on the on the call, the call for a very long time and I met Joan at the first time she came to Camp Sunshine to check out whether or not this would be for family so I feel like we have many many years of experience with bone marrow failure syndromes and I so appreciate kind of knowing people over a long enough time that I also have watched many of your children grow up and kind of seen what the journey is and even to see what some of the patterns in the community are as people's children have gotten older. So it's really exciting to be here. And I have to commend you guys because I remember um, many months ago when you tried to do one of your first oh. Death of Live Thank shows. You. No, no, that's really important. 
Yeah. The technology was really, really crazy. So like you guys got this down and you look like old pros and I like the coffee cups and the relaxed chatting nature. And so you should be commended and applaud yourself. Thank you. They actually, I forgot you were on one of those earlier yeah. shows. Yeah. I mean, we oh, that was a mess. To remind people, we're just moms trying to yeah. figure this out. There's no... It's, a, it's an amazing thing because you're just moms doing a great thing. So I thank I, you, thank you, thank you. We needed that today. Thank you so much. We yeah. were um, we added another mom, Orva, to our team. She does the behind the scenes tech, and Michelle and I were just saying how awesome everything runs now. We've done how many shows did you say, Michelle? Today this is number twelve. Well, and I think we've been working on these shows for a year now. So yeah. It's been a it's been a long road, and Joan, we have we have to keep acknowledging Joan. Joan's been the biggest cheerleader so far. So she was the one who said, "You guys might just be two moms who are doing it, but here's a ring light. Have fun and go." She's never yeah. stopped believing in us, and I I guess as well as the whole board who. Anytime we need something, we have to put out a question. Stephanie is usually really good at getting on and sharing this right away because our hands are busy and it's a, it's a group effort. And I think um, all of our guests too, have you guys take an hour or more out of your Sundays? And then usually on a Saturday, we're practicing with you and it's, it's very, very important. So it's, it's, it's a community effort for sure. It's not, it's not just Nicole and I looking fabulous. Nancy, before we jump into us, mm -hmm. I think it's important to acknowledge that this is a global situation <laughs> that's happening. It's We forget sometimes, um, you know, the people that support us, our doctors, our therapists, we forget like they have lives too and they go home to someplace too and they have families. So we, we want to check in with you. How are you doing? Camp is canceled. You're in the heart, the epicenter of where this is happening in the world. We want to just check in with you first. Well, so Aid, I appreciate you checking in. A lot of people, a lot of families and volunteers and staff checking in with us because um, although people see us in Maine, we truly live in New York City and um, we would be lying to say it's not stressful and complicated here in New York. I was um, sharing with you before that also I think everybody in the city feels like they have some symptoms and that in fact, in our household with three of us, we each have some symptoms. And when you combine them, you would feel as though we certainly had COVID. And I think it was surprising for you to hear that it's really not easy to get tested in New York City. So it's really, unless you are quite ill, you are not gonna find yourself yeah, in a position. I didn't, I didn't know that. My mom works on a in a hospital on Long Island and um, I'm pretty sure if she needed to get tested, she would have, a have access yeah. to be tested. But talking to you today, I was like, are you getting tested? And I just thought it, you wouldn't be able to get tested. So I'm so sorry for that extra stress you're having right now. And that's but so we're not really leaving the house and we're not really doing um, very many things. It's just interesting to see how life is different for us. And I think, you know, a lot of my life has been about running large groups of people. It's kind of like the opposite of social distancing. So it has been really interesting in these last couple of months to rethink how you connect with people and what you do and when it's not in person. And when I never, I really didn't know Zoom before these past, you know, six, eight weeks. And I how much it works as a a medium for people to talk to each other on and to be connected. And I think it's really been helpful for people. So again, I think we're in the middle of this with you. And I think that's an important piece of what's happening in our country today, that a lot of us are in the middle of something together. When you live, you know, in your houses with a child with Schwachmann Diamond syndrome or an adult with Schwachmann Diamond syndrome, you, you kind of, it's true that it's a rare disease, but you know each other. So it feels a little bit less rare. Well, when you're dealing with COVID, it's, like it is not rare. It, the disease is different for everybody and the symptoms are different for everybody. Um, but in fact, it's something we are all doing together. So I think that there's a way in which it makes everything somewhat universal because everybody has to deal with it, even though it's different because there are many things that you guys worry about to start with. And then it adds another layer of that. So in that regard, though, I do feel like we're all in this together. Like this is 
something bigger than all of us and something we all have to figure out. Well, we have to um, yeah. talking about the show, Nancy, um, when I called you, you had mentioned you felt like you kind of had to recreate yourself because you're so used to working in groups. And um, you had mentioned like you felt like you kind of took a page out of our book of a lot of us parents how to recreate ourselves when our children got diagnosed or a lot of families that you work with have to, you know, it's like they've been, they feel like they've been hit by a bus a little bit and they have to recreate their lives a little bit. But I really, I also think you guys have developed, even if you don't feel like you are the people with the expertise in this, you really have developed, like when we were talking before and someone said you isolate all winter. This is not something that is, is unfamiliar in your families. And in some yeah. ways, you have mastered how to do it better than many other people. That does not mean that you're not cranky about it or that it's not consuming and difficult. But you have already developed those skills and the rest of the world is now coming in and trying to figure it out. Right. When this all started, I remember saying to a couple of people because they um, in Michigan, it, it happened very slowly and we could see it. So we've seen in Michigan very uniquely, um, at least to us, I think it started on the east side by Detroit. And so I live all the way on the west side. And so we can see it sort of like a wave. So Detroit has hit its peak and it's I think still they're stable um, at the top of their curve, but they're not going down yet. And West Michigan is still on its way up. We're not quite there yet. So I've been telling people from the start, you know, this is, it's especially SDS families, you know, this is your rodeo. You know how to do this. You take your calm that you, you know how to do this. It's no different than what we do. And it's, it's okay. It is different, but you know how to do it. And so go spread that to everyone else. Well, Nancy, I hope you and your husband are well, and I hope, um, whatever it is that you guys have, that the symptoms are minor and um, you continue to get better. So thank, thank you for you. being on despite not feeling the best. Um, we're gonna start this show with a question, Nancy, you asked us to ask the community, which is a very appropriate um, question to ask first. What helps you deal with the SDS life? We got and I think we got some interesting answers. from a lot of our, um, our our families on the support page. And I, I got to read through them today to make the graphics and they were really inspiring. I loved a lot of them. Where, where is the support page? Is it on the Facebook page? It's on Facebook, yeah. Okay. And are you gonna, you're gonna put the graphics up of the- We have a, we have a summary. Of yep, it should be some bubbles. <laughs> You're doing great, Orva. Some of the universal answers, there we go. So some of the universal answers were just, um, a lot of them had said there that uh, people found blessings in the middle of the chaos. I really like that one. That one resonated with me. Um, people were learning to let go and share the burden with their significant other and family members, which personally is something really hard for me to do is to let other people help because I'm very controlling of environments when life is crazy. Um, Appreciating your child's strength bravery and resiliency that's a big one i was i've been speaking about this a lot with other families is that um are the patients sometimes the symptoms keep coming and you kind of get a break sometimes from symptoms and then there's a new set of symptoms um i think i shared last last show that my son has some new symptoms well new new diagnosis to us not huge big deals but i, I kind of it kind of hit me harder than it maybe would have especially because we're in the middle of a pandemic maybe, but um, it's uh, another SDS mom reminded me that Roman's been functioning with these things for a long time and figured out workarounds and now I have um, information and now I can work with him on that. And so that really calmed me down um, mm. hearing that. And so our, our, our kids do, are very resilient. They, they figure things out on their own sometimes. And part and of 
your kids oh. are very resilient is because of your own resilience, oh. right? I think that there's an interesting parallel for kids that they feel like they can cope with anything because they watch their parents feel like they can cope with things. So I think that resilience is a family affair. And I think that it is, it is, it is great to hear someone remind you, you've already been doing this, right? And then I yeah. think, you, you said something that I want to just react to, which is I also think everything feels a little bit more stressful when you're in the middle of a pandemic. Yeah. Right? <laughs> yeah. To everything and that we're in a world that nobody has experienced before and nobody's had to cope with so like i think it's good that we have the ability to kind of also just throw it in to just acknowledge that in fact we're in new ground and maybe things that might not have felt as stressful at one point in time feel more stressful now because there's an underlying edge of other things that feel yeah. stressful but Again, to commend yourselves for your resilience. I know that many of you um, know that I frequently ask the question, like, what have you learned about yourself since your child was diagnosed? And really, nine times out of ten, the answer from parents that I get is that people have found themselves to be stronger than they think they were, right? And, that, and I think that's an interesting thing to think about, that... Um, even though it takes some time to acclimate to feeling stronger, there is a way in which you do become very capable on this journey. That's a good reminder, Nancy, because, you know, we're still acclimating to this virus that we're all dealing with. And we had to acclimate to SPS life. It was a learning curve for us with all this. And so we're still kind of in the beginning stages of all well, this. Right. When you think about it, right, people would tell you emotionally not to make any decisions within like the first six weeks of a trauma or a new diagnosis or a new thing, right? We are, that's really where we are with this. We really are at the very, very beginning. Like we haven't even learned everything there is to learn about the disease, about the treatment, about how we react to it, about what we can do, about what we, it's like, it's a really crazy early time, but we're only six to eight weeks in. And so that to remember that this will feel better when it becomes more familiar. That's a good reminder. When it first started and everyone had asked, you know, what do you need? What can I get you? And I said, I'm, we're okay. Like we always stock up two, three weeks on groceries because Nathan doesn't go into a grocery store. And so we always, the one thing that's really hit hard for us is that we normally have some form of respite from my sisters and they're unable to give us respite. So Justin and I are having to figure out how to struggle a little, but I was worried because the supplies we normally buy in any given week, the excess toilet paper, the hand sanitizer, all of it, I can't. And so the things I'm used to doing, which are normal for us, I can't do. And so that's sort of my stressful point. The supplies really stressed me out. It really, I was crying in the parking lot. I was, I, I could not believe the things that, we normally get the Clorox wipes, the hand sanitizer, the okay. food. Our kids are very picky about food and have a lot of feeding issues. It was, it was down in down in Texas. They're just buying all the vegan cheese. <laughs> they, they bought everything. We just wiped everything out. Are you able to get groceries there, Nancy? Um, I would say eight weeks ago we were going to the supermarket, and then we started to try to order food, which we're still doing. But if I can give you an example, like if you're trying to order from Costco and it says it's going to be a two day delivery, it's more like a 12 day delivery. Like you don't know. Interesting enough that you kind of forget what you've ordered by the time the order comes. So there is a degree of creativity. Um, yeah. And there are things you never thought of before, right? Like like kind of looking for yogurt um, in a store that's not a supermarket because maybe you don't want to go into the supermarket because you're worried um, is an interesting challenge. Yeah. So there are things like you've been, I mean, as an example, we've been going out for a walk at 1130 at night yeah. because you want it to be a time when there's no one on the street. Right. Uh, and you certainly have masks and gloves and it's still, you work hard to be sure that you're going to, avoid people, but certainly all the stores are closed and many by that point and many are closed in general. So you have to be creative and you have to be very thoughtful about what you're doing and flexible. Yeah. So 
we do have food, but in those caveats we have. Yeah. Wow. Today was a particularly sunny day in Michigan, which I don't know if you know Michigan doesn't happen very often. It's 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 really gray here a lot sometimes. And Justin, my husband had woke up and he's like, I can't wait, I'm gonna go for a bike ride. And I said, Hey, you realize everyone's going for a bike ride right now? And this is what we do. It's I mean, like we had, we're talking about our normal, it's when it's nice and sunny out that's when we would go to the play place because everyone's there when it's raining. And so my kids have always sort of lived this, this weird opposite lifestyle. And I agree. It's been interesting. We're going to break for some comments and questions. Um, Let's see. Joan wants the tortilla blanket. <laughs> <laughs> Join the club, Joan. We all want it. Merry Christmas to us. A lot of people are talking about testing, and I know Janice is up in Canada, and she said it's a lot easier to get a test up there. Oh, that's interesting. Canadians. So, actually, one, of the, one of the reasons why I was surprised to hear that it was difficult for you to test was, again, because my mom, I had assumed she um, would be able to get a test, but she's a frontline, you know, working in a hospital but also because um, Houston just opened up to asymptomatic carriers. Mm -hmm. So it's, I'm sad for you that New York is not there yet. Um, I uh, believe Michigan's opened up to any essential worker or frontline worker can go get a test regardless of symptoms right now. Partially because they don't know how it's spreading in Michigan. It's just doing its own thing. It's kind of going a little crazy. Um, yeah. Jackie's in New York too. She said um, she's doing groceries every six weeks. Wow. Mm -hmm. No, she's been doing it for six weeks. I oh, think. Oh, that's right. Four six weeks. Got it. That's a lot of groceries. A lot of groceries. six weeks of groceries. My kids would have fourteen boxes of goldfish. That's borderline. Not the bags. <laughs> that's really that's really efficient. Right, but Janice also, said that her stress yeah. point is her concern for her adult daughter who's considered a frontline worker, but she has to trust that she knows what she's doing. And I know that's a stress for a lot of our families with these with older teens or young adults who are working in these fast food uh, grocery stores. So they're they're essential workers um, and then having the trust in them. It's like kicking the baby birds out of the nest, but Julie still bringing them back into the nest. Julie wrote the hardest part for us controlling our 21 and 23 year old. They don't see the risks. They are convinced that if they uh, if they stay away from the littles who are vulnerable and from me, we will all be fine. So I think it's an interesting um, thing. I have found, and I don't know if this is happening in other states, here in New York, we have a governor who's talking every day at about 11 o'clock and he's really letting people know what the risks are and giving people very kind of honest information and direction on what to do. And I think that it probably is hard for people to understand the reality of this if they're not in a place where a lot of people have been diagnosed or they don't know somebody who's been diagnosed. But I think it becomes important to still reiterate to people why it is that everybody is so concerned and to think about, I mean, if you begin to think about the numbers of people diagnosed to help people understand that that's a lot of people and invariably everybody is going to know somebody who has been diagnosed. Well, and Nancy, you were saying earlier, the numbers just in New York, right, that are, have been tested positive. How many more have not been able to test but have maybe minor symptoms like you and your husband Correct. that haven't been able to test yet. That's an enormous number to think about. Yes. It's really interesting to see how many people from all over are saying how it is to test where they are. It seems yeah. pretty I'm difficult. Really reading, I'm, I'm reminding myself I should probably look back at everybody because I'm over here reading how everyone's testing. And I think it's interesting too, Nancy, that a lot of people are actually looking to your governor for the Very sense much. of calm because he is doing these daily meetings and i think um michigan's governor is doing it every couple days or some or so but she's giving more um direct input about just kind of the stay-at-home orders because we've had a lot of people in michigan my stress point is a lot we're under a stay-home order similar to new york and uh, we just got mandated to wear masks if we are out in public and everyone is um sort of defying it and not listening and it's 
a little nerve wracking. I live in a very rural area, so they think it doesn't affect them. Um, and we see people, there was a line at the garden center to get in today. And I'm like, how oh, that, I can't understand. That makes me nervous. Joan said, I'm more scared about businesses starting to reopen than I am while everything is closed. I agree, Joan. I live in Texas and every uh, everything is slowly opening up here. And I'm very, very nervous here in Texas. Well, and I think that everybody needs to continue to do whatever they need to do to feel safe, right? Because you can't control other people's behavior, but you can control what happens often in your house. Not always, but you can, you know, and again, this is something you already know. You already know what you need to do to take care of yourselves and your kids. And I think that um, it is nice that in New York we have a somebody who is a leader who is doing this because it, it reminds you that just having something that's consistent and a routine and a routine that keeps you updated about information is inherently calming, right? Yeah. There's just something about communication that's calming. And maybe that's true for other issues that you guys are all facing in your lives and in, in, in your houses too, right? That, that sometimes just talking about what's going on or talking about what the new routine is or when you anticipate something will change or to you talking to your husband about bicycle riding, right? Like that, that there is something very helpful at a, a time when a lot of things are confusing and it's hard to focus and out of control to have something that you focus on or something that grounds you in the course of the day. So, um, and I think everybody can create that for themselves, but you, you don't often think about having to create it because the world imposes a structure in the middle of this because everybody's home. Yeah. You may yeah. create your own structure, right? And your own routine to make yourselves feel comfortable and to relax a little bit, right? But to know that, again, I was saying before that every night at seven, there are people cheering here for healthcare workers and first responders. There's actually something very comforting about that because it marks a time during the day, right? And it also, it feels good and people are funny and silly and loud and it's a wonderful thing. So maybe every state needs people cheering at a certain point in time. I love that. I love that. I think we are. I, I, love love it. It. I don't know how I to start it, it, but I'm going to. That leads well, us to our second question you asked us to ask the group. What good has come from the last six to seven weeks? This was such a good question, Nancy. This was. We got a lot of good answers for really? it, too. Belima said in, in Colorado, there's an 8 p.m. howl. Oh, I love that. That's, That's good to know. She should tape it. Maybe you should have everybody tape what's going on in yeah. their state. Yeah, I like that idea. So some of the good people said was um, environment is getting cleaner. Um, people are able to spend more time with families. Um, they're able to lean on their significant others a little more. Some people are rediscovering hidden talents that they had. Um, what were some others, Michelle? Do you remember? Have you One that I really liked, and I was actually excited to see earlier that she's here, is she had this comment that said, um, oh, there it is. And I kind of combined it with another one, I squished it, but it says rediscovering hidden talents and favorite activities. So one of our little SDS troopers is actually loves to be a baker. And I'm assuming with daily life in the crazy, you don't get a chance to be a baker. And so when we were talking about grocery deliveries, she said it's sort of like chopped every night in her kitchen. <laughs> and I think that's awesome. I think that it's, I know in my house, we've definitely taken a lot of time to just slow down and start to um, appreciate what we already have, which is another one that was said that they were appreciating what they have instead of what they want um, and, and realizing what's a want versus what's a need. Someone said they like to be bored. It feels great not to have to rush everything. Um, and similar to what Nancy said about knowing that at seven o'clock, there's going to pe be people howling out of their windows. Uh, they, they, a lot of people are getting better in their routines that they didn't have time to necessarily implement before or consistently implement them. Um, that's definitely been true in my house. And I like that Julie just typed in that they're learning that there's so many things that can be done from home. Yeah. yeah. It feels like you can't do it. And then you realize you find a way to do a variety of things. 
I'm going to tell you guys something, but I don't want you to laugh. I, before this, have never made homemade biscuits. Never. And I think I've made like three batches of homemade biscuits since this started because I can't buy any. I, I'm i making a lot of things from scratch, too. <laughs> I'm making a lot of things from scratch because I can't get all, I can't um, get what I normally would get. I, I, I do make a lot of things from scratch anyway, but I, I, I don't more into figuring that out. I need um I need a chopped lesson because I I was like um I don't know how to make biscuits. I don't have biscuits. I can't make that without biscuits. And then my mom, I love my mom. If she's here, I love you, mom. She was like, "Do you have flour?" I'm like, "Well, yeah." She was, "Do you, do you have this?" I'm like, "Well, yeah." And she's like, "Then go make biscuits." I'm like, "But I can't just go make biscuits." Well, now Whitney is saying that um she works for the Mental Health Association, and they have a list of things on their website. So maybe she could share that website, and then yes, she did. Do it. That's really she did right below it. Yeah. Thank you, Whitney, for that. Soda, which sounds lovely. People could paint rocks in every state. Um, and I can't. There's a long chat, but I can't. I've lost some of it. Um, I think it's from Dina. She says. Uh, or Deanna, sorry. I work at Target, switched to overnights to avoid the public and only let limited staff in. The routines are all off, but we're managing. What's scary is Target stopped taking any returns until today. Tomorrow they'll start again and quarantine clean items before stocking. I'd be very concerned if I had to work at guest service and after three days, how you will know the condition of those items. New Jersey did pass a new law on what can be returned, but it's still very scary. Julie said her husband learned how to cook, bonus. Mm. Total bonus. That's great. Right? Sadie is baking a pan of brownies from scratch about every other day. I would uh, love some of those. You can just send them right over here. Um, Joan says she's making all the recipes she's been saying she wants to and never gets around to trying. Julie has no idea how to make biscuits. Me either. I'll send you the Google recipe I found. It doesn't work really well. And I, maybe it's just me. Maybe Sadie can teach us how to make biscuits. We're finding in my house, we used to drive Roman around a lot um, to a lot of different places. Um, and now we don't have to drive all those places. So it's more family time, more quality time. Um, another FPS mom recently posted on her own page, or I think maybe the support page, that um, the, the appointments have been moving to telehealth. So what a normal appointment would be is driving 40 plus minutes to the doctor, then the waiting room whole extravaganza of Clorox wiping everything, making sure your kid doesn't touch everything, the sibling might be there, and you know, then the whole doctor experience, and then the whole drive home. Now it's just the phone call. <laughs> so it's, it's a lot easier for all that, especially the amount of doctors our kids see. Mm. Definitely. Pam said over here in the comments that she's making masks and ear savers for the local hospital. And I think that's a good point, too, is that one of the things I don't know if it made it onto the graphic, but one of the, the objects selected um, or, or sent in was that they're seeing all the good in the world. So they're seeing all of these these 12, 13 year old kids who had a 3D printer and they're like, look what I made. I'm saving everything. All of the plants that are at least in Michigan. I know a lot of our automotive plants are, are making respirators and ventilators. Um, it's just I like seeing the good in people. And, and I'm literally sitting next to my sewing machine and my piles of fabric that are waiting to become masks because it's something I can do with my hands to help others. And I think it's, it's, it's very cool to see. A lot, of people, are, a lot of people are saying that um, hopefully we can keep some of this stuff that we've been able to rediscover at this time, which is cool. Yeah. Yeah, I would love it if all of our stores, at least around here, they, they've been closing at like 7 p.m. and they're almost all 24 hours all the time. So the ones that are open are closing overnight. I think they closed early on Easter. And I'm like, that's let's keep doing that. Like, let's keep showing them. I mean, please keep a third shift, maybe stock and clean. But I don't know. I just love it. I think I think Nancy is setting the stage for us, Nicole, that we are stronger than we think we are. And I'm pretty sure she's already confirmed that she said that. I we don't think you like that. that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> What's of that? Um, those are really good questions. Thank you, Nancy, yeah. for sending those over. Um, the last two months haven't all been bad. Yeah. So. Many yeah. of us 
are struggling with feeling like we're wearing too many hats right now, feeling like we've lost our lifelines. Um, Michelle had just mentioned that she normally gets some respite from her sisters. I'm hearing a lot of people saying normally my parents help out, my grandparents can help out. Um, I'm personally struggling a little with um, my son's therapists aren't, we can't take him to a therapist, his therapists aren't coming here. And so we're doing everything over iPads. And so I'm trying to juggle my one-year-old and him and an iPad and my son, you know, is really struggling to pay attention. So, I mean, it's not the end of the world, but we're having a lot of people having to work from home now, homeschool their kids. Michelle and I both homeschool our son, so um, our, our, our kids. So it's not that foreign for us, but a lot of people are struggling with wearing that many hats right now. And the reality is that it's appropriate that people are struggling because people are wearing too many hats, right? It's like if you think about it, um, if you, you're trying to do everything and you don't really have much of a choice, but I think it's okay to feel confused about it, to feel stressed about it, to feel like maybe you're not great at something. I think it's interesting that maybe one of the things that will happen is that you'll learn the things you are good at. And you'll also learn the things that you're doing, but maybe you prefer not doing or not good at. So maybe at the end of this, some of what you're doing will be a little bit different, but it'll be by your choice, right? You have the time to evaluate now. What is it that you've liked that has happened during this time that you've taken on? And what is it that you'd like to get rid of when the end, when the, you know, when the world opens up in a slightly different way? So I think, I think there's some way to use it, but it is true that, it's okay to allow yourself to feel not great about all of the hats that you're wearing and all of the juggling. It gets very blurred, right? Like, and I, I don't know if anybody else feels it, but it feels like it's really hard to focus. And it really feels like at the end of the day, everybody is even more exhausted than they were when they were running around a lot. So the question is, can you build in other things to kind of compensate for the additional things you're doing, right? Like, could everybody do something on their own from five to six every night? Like, is there a way? And someone said, right, and one of the answers that their kids are learning to be on their own a little bit more. And yes. To enjoy time and to be okay doing nothing that, like, it really is okay to have some time during the day where you do nothing. And that's not what everybody's used to in their busy, crazy lives, right? So maybe in the middle of wearing so many hats, you can say it's okay to stop and to take some time to do nothing. And maybe you don't have to do everything and maybe you can divest of some of the hats. Yeah, I think it's really interesting over here, Julie, or uh, yeah, it was a little bit up. Julie said, don't stress about it too much. Our kids are dealing with a lot right now. Throw some of those hats in the wind and they'll be okay. You said something, Nancy, that it didn't even occur to me that we don't have to be great. <laughs> At all. We have a learning curve with these new hats, too. That didn't even occur to me. I guess, again, uh, Matt kind of mentioned this last week, is that uh, special needs parents, we have this, we put ourselves on this level that we have to be superhuman all the time, and that everything we do has to be to a superhuman level. These new hats are new to us. If you remove someone that's, you know, really specialized and now you're in that that place trying to accommodate it's it's so new and maybe yeah. you need to be kind to yourselves right like to give each other permission to not be good at something or to not and no one's really good at anything when you're trying to do too many things at one time that's right. that's really hard to be good yeah at, good at something especially if you do something new when you don't have time to really master that right right yeah. and when you're stressed about it yeah some of us are struggling with establishing new routines with our significant others and our kids. And so a lot of this, we've referred to it as finding your new normal. Um, as we all know, with, as SDS families, we live a different type of normal. I don't know if we get normal. I don't even, it's just a different normal typically, but right now it's a totally different normal. And so do you think you have any, any tips or advice on how we can establish this new normal? Well, so I, one of the things that I said to Nicole before is that we're like not really going to solve all the problems of the world in this hour. But if you think about it, I think that 
if everybody at baseline understands that this is a new and stressful normal, right? And that maybe everybody in the family should pick one thing they want to do or achieve on a day or one time when they want to do certain things, or, you know, maybe you're going to have game night at, again, like I like the seven o'clock time or different times where, so that within the new normal, everybody's making some choices. And then that you understand that at the end of this, maybe you all decide together, which are the things you're keeping and which are the things you're changing. And maybe you thought the new normal you had was great. But my sense is that everybody actually always has things that they want to be a little bit different in their lives. So maybe the new, new normal is like pandemic normal, right? Like what do you do now that you couldn't do before? And I, and I think that, I mean, again, this is a moving target. And I think that's the other thing that like changes in the air. We don't know where this is going to end or how it's going to land or when there's going to be an immunization. So it's in some ways, if you can see this as like a little bit of a temporary time and a building time and a growing time, knowing that there will be an end to it. And that way it's a little bit different than some of what your life dealing with a medical issue that's not going to go away, right? Like this is going to change. And I think the thing to prepare yourself for too is you need to let yourself, this is going to sound crazy, so I apologize because it's, the pandemic is a very serious thing, but there are moments of it that you can enjoy because the rest of the world is not doing those other things either. So in a way, you can have some camaraderie with those people in your life who are not SDS families, right? Who, who maybe are going to be washing their hands more and being more worried about things and using more Clorox wipes. And where are all the Clorox wipes in the world? They seem to be gone. Totally they seem gone. to be somewhere else. And we're all, who knew that the thing you would be missing, like it's not Godiva chocolate, it's not the best wine in town, it's the Clorox wipes that everyone. And the toilet made. paper. The toilet paper. Toilet. And the but toilet so paper. I, in the creating of new routines, maybe you just have to think about creating little things, create five minute projects, create, you know, um, there's someone I know who used to take like five minute power naps, right? Well, maybe Ooh. you build a five minute power nap into your day or into everybody's day, even if your kids are old or grown up or, or whatnot, so that you have little things to look forward to, but also like a time when it is okay to be calm and not to worry, right? Like that it's it's okay to have time during the day when you're upset or you're confused or distracted and unfocused, but it's also okay to have fun and to not worry, you know? And again, maybe from eight to nine every night you decide no one can think of things that are gonna worry them. You need to focus on things that are gonna make you feel good. And I, I really like the exercise at the end of the day with kids to say, um, what was your favorite part of the day, right? And to always have the, because even in a bad day, there is a better part, right? And I think that it's nice to hold on to those things. Um, and I just think like, it's going to be interesting what your kids remember about this time is what you remember about this time, right? Like, um, I know one mom who just like, when her kid was getting chemotherapy, and came home post chemotherapy, she baked with him all the time. And really what he remembers is the baking, right? And now he loves to bake, you know, now he's 20 and he loves to bake. So some of the things that you do during the course of the day are gonna be the things your kids hold on to about this time, so. I think I'm gonna start a mandatory, sorry, go ahead, Nicole. I was going to say, um, I reference that a lot. I um, Part of my role on the board is to talk to as many families as I can. And um, I have found almost 100% of the older patients have told me, they don't really remember, they say I was in the hospital a lot. They acknowledge that their life was hard as children. But they all, tell, the way they explain their childhood was my parents played board games with me in the hospital, my siblings this that's what they convey to me when I when I ask them tell me about you know, your childhood and they they explain this magical time in their life I'm sure if you talk to the, the parents it's a different story but that's what they truly remember they remember how amazing their families made their siblings and the parents made it for them and they really don't the other stuff was more of a blur for them 
<clears throat> so that's really such an important thing for us all to remember. As, as parents, right, you influence also what your children remember and how your children see this time. So if you see this time as an incredibly stressful time, then that will help them see it as an incredibly stressful time. But if you see this time as an adventure where you're changing up some of the patterns and you're learning new things about yourself and you're spending more time together, those messages will come through to them and those things will be calming yeah. to them because in their world, you regulate the way the world feels and how wonderful it is that you can do that for your kids. So you just need to have that feeling of things are going to be calm and things are going to be okay. And then you need to be able to translate it. And I think if you give yourself permission to feel whatever you feel when you feel it, and then to move away from it and to, again, relax a little bit, I think that that will help you and help your children. So even though we're all together this time now, um, how is, is it that we can connect when we're so stressed and how do we not transfer our anxieties from one to another um, and sort of just kind of block them all out? Not Maybe not ignore them, but block them out and filter them a little better. Well, I think you guys already have some of the magic of that, like listening to the two of you in the pregame show. Right. There is a way that you kind of connect and laugh with each other. And my hope is that many of the other people in the SDS community have that as well, because it's like you guys, maybe more than your other friends, understand the difficult nature of living with something that is uncertain and something that's hard to live with. So maybe you know how to do this and you find a way to bring joy to each other. And like the tortilla blanket is a is a great example. Or And I don't know if the world knows that you have mugs with your faces on them, but silly things that make the world more fun are oh, things oh nicole's got me up okay oh all right <laughs> i think that like bringing joy to your lives and doing things to take care of yourselves will inherently do things that will make your kids feel better and again look for the time during the day where you can do that because no matter how stressful it is in your houses there are moments where things are okay and where you don't have to run out and go to the doctor. So maybe if you're doing a telehealth visit, you capture that extra time, those two hours you would have had, and you decide you're going to do something fun in that time. Like maybe you finger paint, right? Or maybe you do something you wouldn't normally take the time to do because you were so busy. So to kind of maybe recoup some of that time that is, that's that been given to you in the middle of this crazy time. But it's also right. okay to accept, right? that this is a crazy time and you guys are doing the best you can to get through this crazy time. And every day you get through, you've done a good job, right? You That's need a good to reminder for ourselves. Nancy, I'm happy that you um, were with us for that. We always ask our guests to come on a little earlier just to make sure there's no technical difficulties and just kind of chat things out. And I'm happy that you saw, we were a little more comfortable obviously with you because we, we know you, but I'm happy you saw that with us because it's not, it's not a hundred percent stressful. You know, doing this show is out of our comfort zone and we are right. not at our personal best probably right now, but I'm happy that you saw that we're really silly and um, we're fun and we, we have this connection with the, uh, with each other because we've been um, working on the show for so long, but I'm happy you saw that because that, that translated to you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's, oh, go ahead. I was gonna say, I think you should bring other families on at some point to do like funny things. Like maybe you should do funny things their pets have done during the pandemic. Oh, that's, really, that's a good like, idea things that their kids have made, like to be able to do kind of like a showcase of people's growth in the pandemic. I think that might be fun. Hold on, taking notes. Nancy has taken over the show. Nicole and I will be here if you need us. We bow down to Nancy. I love it. This is why we created this. Michelle has been sending Orba and I, Orba again, that runs the tech behind the scenes. Um, she has a pet raccoon, basically, that she's been feeding and <laughs> gives us a big giggle. <laughs> So, yes, I do, I do. His name is Joe Nocturnal. He is a phenomenal little trash panda that lives under my deck. He is he's very kind. I like him. He gets into some silly antics. That's a really I like great the idea of bringing idea other families on, though. Nancy, thank you. Um, we're going to just 
pause for some comments and questions. I really like this one from Angela. She says, Nancy, can you talk about how we can help teens that are exper with experiencing our calm? I feel like this is harder when they have more access to others in the world through Zoom with friends or with social media. So it's not as easy as a, you know, my third, not my third grader, she's in fifth grade, I don't know what I'm talking about, my younger kids who don't have all of that access? You know, I wonder if you could help your teenagers teach you some things, right? Like, could there, there be a learning process where your teens are the teachers, whether it's about Zoom or something on social media or something you don't know how to do, where they can kind of educate you so that they're taking on a slightly different role in your house and it puts you in a position where you're talking to them about something that is not the pandemic and not SDS and not those other things. So to kind of allow them to be the experts at something. But I, I understand what you're saying is like they have a connection to a whole other world that you can't completely control, but you can ask them about it. And you can give them permission to not tell you about it. But again, I would try to use humor with teenagers as best as you can and to let them invite you into their world. And maybe, you know, it's interesting to think, what do they think about how you're doing with everything? And I think you might ask them, right? Like you might kind of say, how do you think I'm doing with the pandemic? And I know it sounds like a funny question, but I think they also will tell you, and then you can tell them how you think they're doing. And if there's anything that you would like to engage them in differently. And I mean, teenagers are their own creatures. So you can't always control what they're doing or know how they're thinking. But I would also think that they are in a different position than your other kids to understand of what's going on. So I would also give them an opportunity to talk not around other children, but kind of on their own. And I don't know, again, I don't know how many people are going out of the house or what you're doing, but could you have teen time? Like, could you go for a walk with a mask with a teenager and kind of try to build a separate time for them so that they can feel also special in this and that you understand that they understand this more than their younger siblings do? And you wonder what they're going to remember and what they're going to take away and do they have a goal for this time? Like, is there something they'd like to achieve while they're in the house cooped up with you? Or is there a new game you can all learn how to play? Um, and let them, let them be the leaders so that they have an opportunity to feel a degree of competence and growth as well. I think Whitney that's very important. Of, Whitney said a lot of teens are teaching their parents TikTok dances. I love that. Mm -hmm. Actually, we have that idea coming up on a later SSF Live for a TikTok dance. Nicole and I are not doing a TikTok dance. Don't get no. excited. It's well, not I, us. Not, I was a former professional dancer. Don't speak for me. I'm going I'm to do it. Nicole can do a TikTok dance. <laughs> I actually had to download the app because like Nicole said, we do have something planned coming up with um, um, some other friends in yellow shirts involving TikTok. And we had to ask them, I'm like, I don't know what this is. And so I downloaded the app and it confused me even more. And so then I tried to do one and I just look ridiculous. I, can't, I, don't, I don't know what I was Please doing, be, but I like watching other people. Invite us to that. Please be sure. Oh. Oh, no. Nancy, we're going to make you do the TikTok dance. <laughs> I have a question for TikTok though, because we're all talking about TikTok in the comments. I know we're almost to our hour. Sorry, we might go over a little bit. Um, I can someone please teach me and Nicole how to TikTok? Like, how do they get all these graphics in there? And then they're like moving and they're standing on a ceiling, and I don't we, understand it. Michelle, we, do we have to make our own dance? Our teens to teach us TikTok because I, I want to learn too. A good opportunity for your teenagers. Do we have to make our own dance, or do we? Does someone make the dance for us? And then we copy it? I don't we have know. A two, two more quick questions to get through. Sorry, we're going a little over tonight. Um, the next one is um, there's a, a heightened awareness of ourselves getting sick um, and not being available to our children, uh, possibly our parents getting sick, the grandparents of our kids getting sick. Um, so there, there's already like an underlying worry a lot about our children getting sick or the patients themselves might feel a little underlying worry about themselves getting sick. But now we have the multiple layers of the caretakers 
a little more worried about getting sick. The, you know, the support people, our, our parents, the grandparents, what if they get sick as well? Is the whole family going to get sick? That's a lot of layers of worry um, together. Yeah, I would agree that there is a lot of worry. And I, again, wonder how you work to partialize some of the worry so that you're not worrying about everything at once, right? Because in life, it's really hard to worry about the entirety of your kids, yourselves, your parents. And I think that, you know, the things that you can do are the things, again, that you know that you can do, right? You can be smart. You can do everything you can do to protect yourselves and protect your children, knowing that that doesn't give you an absolute out that you will not get this. But in some ways, you need to think about this time before there is a vaccine as a time that is time limited and that you're still going to do when the world opens up again, all of the things that you're going to do in isolating and taking care of your kids, but that there will be a time when there will be hopefully a vaccine or some kind of treatment so that the worry will change. Maybe if you understand that the worry will change, it makes the worry in the moment a little bit different, but I think that it's also okay to let yourselves feel vulnerable and to accept that that's not a great feeling and nobody, nobody feels good about it. You guys have, again, a place where you start because your children have Schwachmann Diamond Syndrome or you have SDS, but I think that in a way, worrying is a complicated thing. It doesn't really help, right? Because you worry that you, you worry about something that could happen that maybe won't happen, right? And I have one very um, capable father who used to say, um, don't, don't pay twice, right? Like, don't make yourself so crazy about everything that even when things are going okay, you're worrying about things going badly, right? And I think that in, in some ways, if you could take what's happening in the world and then try to think today, everybody in my house is okay, you know, and that tomorrow you're one day closer to whatever the treatment is going to be and whatever the vaccine. And it's not different than some of the things people are learning about SDS and new treatments and new things as they happen. It's you have the tools for how to deal with this because you've learned how to do it in the SDS world. So can you translate those tools to the COVID-19 world? And I think you can. I think if you think about who you are and what you do, that you can do that. But that doesn't mean you shouldn't yell at your parents to be very careful in what they do and that you should try to encourage everybody to social distance and that you shouldn't wear masks. You should do all of those things that keep you in the lowest risk category. And then I think you should also, again, be kind to yourself to know um, you can only do what you can do. And it's okay to worry to a degree. But I think reach out to each other for help, for support, um, take care of people when you know somebody is sick, and know that this is a moving target. It is going to change. It's only eight weeks old. Think about it. It's only eight weeks old. By the time it's 16 weeks old, we are going to know a lot more and we are going to understand a lot more. So we all have to kind of breathe in. And I think do yoga, do different techniques to calm yourself down that you need to, over the course of the day, breathe in and breathe out and let yourself, give yourself permission not to worry for a period of time. Where's my mind blown emoji? Like, I, I feel like I need that tonight because I don't know why I have not reminded myself at all this whole time that we're still in the infancy of this. Yes. This is all so new. You're right. If we're I double think, this, Nicole, I think it's because on every show that we start with that we've done about the coronavirus is that we've said, please check back, check with the CDC. A lot of the doctors are even saying "I'm this will change next week. So even the information we were given in the very beginning is totally different than right now. And so Nicole and I, I feel are constantly, you know, reaching out to doctors and getting updated information. So for me, at least, it feels like I'm 100 weeks in. But you're right, Nancy. We yeah. are only a few weeks in. We're babies. Yeah. And it's yeah. interesting. One of the big feelings that we're all having right now is this grief. There's grief over so many things. 
There's grief over uh, the loss of family and friends. There's grief over disrupting routines. There's grief over um, missing out on the regulars of life. And there's grief over missing Camp Sunshine. I know we're all really upset about that one. That's our home. That's our happy place. That's even our kids who've gone on make-a-wish trips say, okay, but we're still going to camp, right? Like that's like, this doesn't take place of camp. How can we deal with this? So, you know, there is a certain amount of grief associated with this, right? There's the loss of routines. There's the loss of graduations. There's the loss of camp. There's a, for people who were going to go on a make-a-wish trip. So I think that, again, you have to allow yourselves the opportunity to grieve and to be sad about those things. But then I think you have to come back and think about there are losses and there are gains. And what are the gains? And what do you want to prepare for? for the future like what in this time could enable you i'm going to go back to governor cuomo who's like how do you make what you had better right like what are the things that you learn like maybe some of your doctors are going to be willing to do telehealth with you in the future and if they are maybe you've bought yourself three hours a day of more time over the course of the lifetime of your child's medical visits so how do you take that as a reward, right? Like, how do you figure out what the gains are and understand what the losses are? And again, to recognize that many of the losses are going to be temporary, but some of the losses, like quite honestly, like a kid's graduation, like that may not ever happen in the same way, but maybe there's something else you could do to create that experience. And maybe there are things you're, again, like, maybe your television show or whatever we, you don't call it a television show, right? What do you call it? A, a video show or a, an internet show that like, maybe it's not going to take the place of camp or of this thing or that thing, but it is serving a need and meeting. So maybe what's going to happen is that there's a whole world out there that we haven't explored and that you're going to explore it because you're in this situation and you're going to find things that, bring joy and bring satisfaction. But the way you will accept those things is if you let yourself grieve the loss of them, some things, and, and hopefully those losses are temporary, right? Like everybody's gonna remember who graduated during the pandemic, even though they're not gonna remember the graduation ceremony, right? And I think that that's what will be when you come back together with everybody at Camp Sunshine, at an SDS day, whenever those things are, you will feel that joy again. So I think that thinking about loss as a temporary thing, but letting yourself feel that sense of loss is really okay because things have changed. And, you know, we don't talk a lot about crying and about different things, but it is really okay to let yourself have those moments and those feelings and to give your kids permission to say, like, this is a bummer. Like, this is nobody... In the same way that you didn't choose to have SDF, right? Nobody chooses a pandemic, right? Like this is not what any of us wanted for this time. And I think this is the place where universally we are all in the same place. This is not what we wanted, but this is what we have. So how do yeah. we deal with what we have? Because this is kind of here right now, you know? And again, there's going to be a time that we're going to look back at 2020 and we're going to say, do you remember when we did that show in 2020 and we did this and we then there was, who got that tortilla blanket, right? Like there's going to be. Who got that tortilla blanket? <laughs> you have to keep doing things that are going to be memorable, right? You need to keep making. Memories don't have to come from the most dramatic thing or the things that we've known. They have to come from where we are now. So I think that it's important to think about like, you're doing some of it and you're going to do more of it. And I think for everybody who's also listening to this, like to think about things that bring joy and happiness and maybe it doesn't take over for everything else, but it helps you get through the moment. Nancy, are you crying? It's not are Nancy's crying? place without I, some tears. I didn't get a tissue alert, but God. I didn't bring tissues so into so this. I'm going to, as soon as I get off, I'm going to, well, as soon as we put the kids to bed, I'm going to rewatch this with my husband yeah. Peter because we know, like, I feel like I was just in a session with you. I, I know when we're at camp, like, literally all we, sometimes you just start with, just say your name and, you know, like, a, where you're from and who your child is. I, I'm bawling, bawling, <laughs> just, just at that point. We needed you so much tonight. 
Nancy. Thank There's you so tissue much. boxes in Nancy's place on every other chair because we don't share very well because we all need them. Julie had a really good visualization for grief and I think it's a beautiful thing to go out on. It's uh, Julie said, I heard, I heard it said once that you can feel the grief, but don't take a shower in it. Or, oh, I'm sorry, feel the grief, just don't take a shower, but just take a shower. I can't read, but just take a shower in that grief, but don't soak in the tub with it. So feel it, allow yourself to feel it, and then let it go. And instead, go take a detox bath. Thanks. Thank you, Orva. I can't, I can't read things. Everyone else can read things. Let's, can we just add, Julie's picture there is a picture of her adult son. In a, yes. A group home, and she was able to visit him after so many weeks. So that you could see his smile, and I, I wish we could see the smile of Julie's face on the other side. Julie, thank you so much for sharing that that picture and that yeah. story with us. Thank you so much, Nancy. You are beloved. You are adored. We we care about you so much. Please be safe. Thank you for joining us. Go get some rest. Goodbye. <laughs> Yes, and I'll, I'll keep you posted. Okay, okay? thank you. Yes, let us know how you're doing. Check in with us. Not about us, about you, you know. Yeah. Maybe us too. I don't know. Bye, Thanks Nancy. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. <sighs> Who needs a nap? <laughs> Me, I do. I need a nap. Where's my burrito blanket? Oh, we have our blankies right here. We're going to go over, guys, but we're going to... Um, just walk you through real fast. Like we, we mentioned before, we've um, had a lot of feedback from y'all, which is great, but some of y'all have said, hey, can you have this show on da 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 And we're like, girl, we did show on that. So we want to walk you through our um, YouTube channel. These are all um, uploaded on the Schwachman Diamond Syndrome Foundation page, but they're also on YouTube. So we're going to walk you through how to find them on YouTube real quick. So this is our YouTube page. If you just go to youtube.com, go in the top search bar and type in Schwachman Diamond Syndrome Foundation, it'll bring you to the uh, red blood drop with the, uh, the black S around it. When you click it, you can go to the top and go to playlists. That's where you're gonna go in and find all of the SDSF lives. So there's some specifically about COVID-19. Those are in a playlist. There's all of them back from Be The Match, camp, the hot mess Camp Sunshine that Nancy was talking about in the beginning. That's there. You can go back and laugh at Nicole and I for the first ever one we did. Um, <laughs> another good one was Dr. Ross Green. That was a really good wow. one. And then any, any in regards to COVID-19, we'll say COVID-19 in the title of them. So... So real fast, I'm going to go over the ones that we have done on COVID-19. So uh, we started with um, Dr. Tobin, if you go under videos, I think. I don't know that Dr. Tobin made it into the COVID-19 one because it wasn't well, supposed to be, but then he talked about it. Yeah. So maybe if we, could, we start at videos. Yeah. There, go to videos. Perfect, so perfect. On, there we go. We, he was originally on to talk about the diabetes study, and we kept postponing him and postponing him because we said, oh, my goodness, we're in the middle of a pandemic. You know, everyone's concerned about this pandemic. But then we decided to have him on. But it was actually really good to have him on because the news kept saying, if you have underlying conditions like diabetes. <clears throat> so we did wind up talking to him at the end about diabetes and COVID. And then we moved to poor Johnson, Dr. Johnson Liu. He, he had to do so much work on his show because this virus was so brand new and less as hard as we say in Texas. He had to do a lot, a lot, a lot of work on, on his show um, to talk about. Um, he's, a, he's an adult hematologist um, and he was super helpful. And then we jumped over to Dr. Charlie McCaslin because, um, again, they're talking about underlying lung issues. Um, he had to put a ton of work into his show as well. Um, he was so great. We had a lot of great feedback on his show. And then we went over to Dr. Seth Corey. Um, he is compiling tons and tons and tons of data and statistics, and he looks at – he's a, he's a, 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 a pediatric hematologist, um, but he looks at things in such an 
interesting way. It was really, really great to talk to him. Um, his posts are really positive and calming. And then we went over to the psychological aspects with, um, with our friend Mac. Um, and then tonight with um, Nancy Sincata. So what is this, six shows? Yeah, I think, well, let me count in my little head here. One, two, three, four, five. Yep, this is number six. Six. So um, we do not have, we have um, some other shows in the queue. Um, if, if we've missed a type of show that you want to hear about right now, um, specifically about the virus, let us know. We have advertised that we're going to be having a virtual camp. <clears throat> um, we also have a fairly long list of other um shows that we wanted to have outside of camp and COVID um, that are in the queue, um, but we'll probably be launching our virtual camp shows soon. Um, but if you have a, an idea about the virus and something that would help make you feel calm, please let us know. Um, everything's still emerging, but thank you, Orba, for um, showing us um, how to find those. And Orba, then, wizard of the year trophy. She is such, we call we call Orba our wizard because she's behind the scenes like the Wizard of Oz. Um, so as a reminder, um, how to win our burrito blanket? Um, share, like, um, start a watch party. Enter if you've commented. We will pick a winner that way. How oh, that burrito blanket is awesome. It's <laughs> so cute. Bonus points if you can send us a list of all the places you and your burrito blanket would travel. That would be really After cool. you can. That'd be awesome. I love it. I'm so excited. I kind of want one. I think Nicole and I should each have one for the next show. We'll start them in the burrito blankets. Thank you to Orba, our behind the scenes um, tech wizard. She is amazing, amazing. Um, Michelle and I were just going over today how far we've come and how well we, the three of us work together on this show. It's, it's a very well-oiled machine. We put a ton of work in behind each show and um, thank you so much Orva, especially for all, everything you've been doing to help us get this show to the next level. And now um, that everyone so knows how to look at the old shows, they can go see how ridiculous it was. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Um, thank you all. Be well. Be safe. Take care of yourselves. Wash your hands. Wash your drink hands. coffee. Hug a friend from seven feet apart, I believe. I saw in the comments that Janice opened up a Zoom meeting to go have like a 10, 10 it's something about quick. Eh, it's up in the comments. You'll find it. Thank you, guys. Bye, guys. Have Bye -bye. a good week.